Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi, and welcome back at the museum. As you can see behind me, it's a little bit of a mess. We start constructing the new media wall in the next few months in Palm Springs, and therefore each piece of equipment has to be taken out and serviced when needed. One of the items that we're taking out is the DCC 900 demo slash prototype used by Philips and Gijs Wiertz and donated to us a couple of years ago. This DCC 900 is totally different from any later version, so time to do a specific video about it. In order to show the audio world a new DCC player in 1992, Philips created this first proto and demonstration version of the DCC 900. We know of only two in existence, and both of them are on display at the DCC Museum. They were donated by Gijs Wirtz, who traveled the world with this player. It was specially equipped to do a blind test between DCC and CD, and hopefully not to hear any difference. We have done a previous video about it, where Gijs Wirtz did his original presentation from 1992 during the 2019 DCC convention in Eindhoven. This video is about the technical differences and how to connect the DCC 900 to conduct the blind test. The DCC 900 was produced in week 6 of 1992 and has software version 05. It was equipped with a multi-voltage switch that is not standard for any DCC 900. The company De Wettersnijder in Friesland, the Netherlands donated their specialty and added a precision cut in the lid so we could replace it with plexiglass for display. This DCC 900 has a few extra switches on the back controlled by a board to allow a blind switch between the music playing on a DCC and CD. The digital output from the CD on the bottom is connected to the digital input on the DCC 900. That way they use the same converters for the test. The normal slash demo switch would have to be set to demo mode when a CD player is added. We use the impatient lover on DCC and CD for the test. The syncing process between the players is tricky as you would have to do this manually. Naturally you would keep the movement of the switch moments hidden, hence the name blind audio test. Time to take this 900 apart and look under the hood. The metal plate on the right is not standard and holds the board specifically designed for the blind test. The mechanism looks the same but is different in detail. It only has one belt for tray loading while all later models have two. The later models also have electronics added to the side. But the biggest difference is a much larger read and write board with no SMD capacitors. This player still worked after almost 30 years. We only replaced the bells and pinch rollers. If this would have been the final design, most players would still be alive as the SMD capacitors used in the final version started to destroy the boards. The audio board does have a few SMD capacitors but on a less critical place and the board does not seem to be multi-layer. Although it was still working, we replaced these 5 SMD capacitors just to be safe. So how would you be able to tell if you actually have a prototype, even if you do not see any demonstration switches at the back? There are three good indicators. An early 9092 serial number will indicate 92 followed by a number under 20 is a first indicator. The second indicator, you will see on the back no external cooling, like in the final version. And lastly, from the front, all early models have a printed open and close logo on the actual button. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.